The first position, actually, I said to you is a kind of exercise, and I wonder if you're able to solve it. It's black to move. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in. By the way, everybody, this is Elizabeth Pates. Is that how you say the last name? Yes. Pates, right. yes. Uh, she is an international master and uh, is going to be teaching us some beautiful chess. So we're going to have some fun. So, yes. yeah, so I guess we're going to start with some puzzles and then go from there. Yes. Can you see arrows if I draw arrows? Yes, I can. I can see arrows, yes. Okay, cool. Does she stream? She does stream. Can you send me the link to your stream in the chat? The link, and then um, I can just create a on, command for you. On, on Zoom, yeah. Can you go by, do you go by Liz for short? Liz, Lizzie, whatever you like. Okay. I mean, Germans call me Ellie, and <laughs> Americans and English call me Lizzie, so I'm just <laughs> We'll do Liz right there. Uh, where'd you send the link? I sent it to Zoom. Was it that? I can also send it to your chat. Oh, I don't see it on the... Yeah, just post it in my chat. Okay, no, they got it. We're good. We found it. Okay. All right. Can you make that an exclamation mark list command, Warren? Thank you. Okay. Can you spoil it? No spoiling the puzzles, chat. I'm not reading while I solve puzzles. Okay. So, puzzle thoughts. Um, hit, 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 hit is where that all is looking. Um, hit. Okay, do I have any good like checking potential first? I guess first, this is under threat there. So if, but you can always bring that stuff. Okay, because I want to take, but then you can take. And then, I mean, that does nothing for me except trade a rook. Because I can't exactly. take, because you can take. So that that's worthless to me there. Mm -hmm. um, if I take here, and you take, and I take, you go into check. You have one legal move back. I guess you could also block, but I guess you could... No, I mean, yeah, you don't have any blockers that could actually block. So I would put your king here. And then I hit you here. And then I think you're screwed. So I think that would actually be mate. Very good. Actually, like what helps when you calculate variations is to always first, I mean, like to have an algorithm of calculation because, I mean, for us professionals, it's automatic how we calculate. But for people like who are not like professionals, for them, it's actually good to have a system. That's why what I always say is like, first watch out for checks, captures combined, which mm -hmm. is only queen takes a4 because it's a check right. and a capture combined. The next step is to watch out for checks. The next step is to watch out for captures. Then number four is to make moves which are threatening something. And number five is very deep. It's so-called silent moves or prolactical moves. Yeah. That's why if you follow this calculation, then obviously queen takes a4 is one of the first candidate moves. And then you just calculate all the checks and it is very easy. Yeah. Good. This was an easy one. I just wanted to see. Oh, um, is that easy? I felt like that was hard. Oh, man. No, that, that was not so hard. It was an easy one. I will just now <laughs> get you something a bit more complicated. I felt like that was so difficult. OK, uh, hold on. Let me I want to capture. Oh, can I not capture Zoom? Oh, no. Yeah, you can how do I capture Zoom? Because I've seen Alex capture your. Uh, yes, actually, how to capture Zoom? Um, like you have to have Zoom open in a big way, and then you make the Zoom capture. But it can be that you don't see my picture because you have to change a setting. I will show you something on All the right. screen. Share. Perfect. So what's the setting? Yeah. <laughs> So now you see my screen. I hope I will not. I do. Uh, yep. Um, so now I think if you go on the settings, then you go on video, and usually when you have this, the screens, there's a screen, uh, the win the windows capture. You should see my picture, but probably you see nothing, right? I see a black screen where your picture yes, would be. Yes, and now you go to advance. Okay. And on advance, this must be the direct. 3D11 must be installed. 
Okay, where are you getting because settings Because it's automatic. From? Okay, I mean, go back to general. View then options. Then go to video. And then after the video down is advanced settings. Man, I don't have those settings at all. <laughs> Do you have Zoom as an application downloaded? I think so. I think that's what I'm using. Or is this just the web Zoom meeting piece? It might be that. I have view options at the top, which I can change the ratio. Now with general, you have to go from general to video, and from video you have to go to the advanced button. Hold on, go back to the go back to where your settings are. Can I see that? Yes, I mean the general settings are here, and here are the settings. They came from here. You press on this icon, which should be in your case probably an A, with a red spot. Then uh, there are the settings here. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh, I got it. Yes. All right, sweet. Yes. And then you go on video. Yeah. You go on advanced. And then you have to be sure that video rendering method is on direct 3D11. So I have direct show or media foundation for my two video captures. I mean, like, this should be that. And if this one is there. Oh, video rendering. OK. Yeah, direct 3D11. Changes will take effect after you restart Zoom. OK. Let yes, me call so you back really fast. Yeah, yes, OK. <laughs> maybe this is the best way, yes. OK, one second. OK. Rip me. Llama, llama not prepared. I thought it would just auto capture. I apologize, guys. I'm the IT guy. Hey, we figured it out, kind of. A gift for you. Hi, Booty Cat. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Well, that's what I'm doing. We're turning it, off. We're turning it back on. I shut it off. We're turning it back on. I read the notes. I didn't know it wasn't going to capture. <laughs> oh, man. She was my Google. That's right. Uh-oh, she's not letting me be in the meeting. She's like, uh-uh, he's out of here. I hope she accepts me. There we go. OK. Does it work now? All right. Uh, let me do this, and then that, and then properties, Zoom meeting. Ta-da! Well done. Thank you so much. Tech support. That's actually it's my job is tech support, so. You're the... So it worked, no? Yes, yes, yes. It's perfect. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. So, and now um, I will set you the next exercise. And then actually, like, I like that. I'm, I'm really happy that you solved that, which means, like, that you will understand if I will show you some positional game and explain you the square strategy. So it's already good news. Perfect. I like good news. Not good enough. I feel like it's... Ah, no, this is sorry. I have to copy it again. Disappear it. Just have to go to your file. I made a file for you. There we go. For one second. And also for chat, you can of course also try to solve these exercises. Okay, for some probably it's easier and for some it's harder. And you yep. have to change and flip the boards you are white. Okay. And nope. And flip board. Okay. So Let's see, do I have any check captures first? I don't believe so. Okay, so I have checks here and here. Yes. Those are my only check options. Mm -hmm. So let's work out either of those. Um, this has got a lot of complicated pieces going. Oh boy. Oh, okay, so they've got a knight here. I have a knight that can also attack that square. So let's mm -hmm. go here. If I go here, they can mm -hmm. block with a knight, they can block with a queen, they which would be a bad block. move, and a block yes, with a pawn. That's the worst part. They can block with a pawn and attack you, and you lose a tempo. And then I lose tempo with it as well. Yeah. 
because take, 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 take. That doesn't work. Okay, so that doesn't, that's a dead square. Yes. So if I go here, they can take here. I take here. They take here. Mm -hmm. So basically, the square on F7, what is special about the square on F7? The square yes. on F7 has two, two attackers, and it's a checkmating square, technically, because this is yes. currently blocked. Exactly. What is the problem about that checkma uh, checkmating square? The problem is that it's defended by this rook. Exactly. So, I mean, like, usually, like, when we have this kind of exercises where we understand there is a mating square and there is a piece disturbing it, right. the first pattern which gets to our mind is maybe there is a chance to distract it. Right. So, that's kind of my thought right now is how do I distract this rook? Yes. And you already, like, met number one. You uh, watched out for all the checks. What was number two? Um, probably captures. Yes. What kind of captures do you have in this position? So I have a queen capture right here, which mm -hmm. could distract this or this. Obviously, he can't take here because he instantly gets mated. So takes with the pawn. I have a rook hit right here. And now I'm extra attacking this square. I know, but unfortunately, but... The black will just capture that guy with a oh, very dang. annoying check because your queen is off the board dang that's annoying okay oh jeez. but okay you you already like uh, mentioned one capture on h5 do you have other captures here other captures where i can i can capture the pawn in the middle i don't think it is a good capture at right now off first glance, but technically it's a capture. Um, I mean, that can capture, I could just immediately take this capture. Oh, that could be good actually, because then if they take, now I take and I have a check. So now they can't take this pawn and then that's a distraction as well. Okay. Yeah, that works. Yes, you, you solved it. So basically you understand if you just like follow a system and your calculation, it's so much easier. Because basically like by just checking out for these captures, you understand the problem here is that pawn. Right. Then you understand, okay, in order to distract that rook, you have to first distract the pawn. So <laughs> right. Basically, but it's just like, it's know, multiple levels of, of distraction. <laughs> yes, but that's how sometimes actually it works. And if you really like, are disciplined in following a system, right. it is so much easier, especially for, for players who are not experienced. Because for us, actually, like I don't follow any system. It's just I see the board, I understand, and I play. Right. It, I mean, these kind of exercises for us are quite easy, but for, for players not so much experienced, you have to go really with the system and here, okay, you distract that guy, then you distract that guy, yep. and you mate. Very good. Next one. Next one will be harder, I guess. Yes, this is a bit harder. Let's see. So, but you're doing good. <laughs> good. So, now you're white again. Okay. And you have the following position. Okay, so thoughts, I have two takes that can check immediately. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I have any other takes that can check. I have, after that, I just have a bishop that can check. And I think that's all my checking capabilities first. Yes, but what, what we first have to basically, if you would follow the system, what we have to first watch out before we go to the checks. Before we go to the checks, what do we need to look out for? Check, yeah, checks is number two in the list when you, if you would follow that list. Number oh, one okay. is a combined check and captures. Yeah, so check and captures first, right? So these two. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So I want to look at these two first. Mm -hmm. So if I take here, it's just a, a retake with the king, which mm -hmm. might not be terrible. Because then I have some discover checks with this guy. Very if good. I take here, the rook can just take, and that just seems like a dead end. The knight could also take, the king could also take. It seems like there's a lot of possibilities there that don't do anything for me. And yes, I don't get on those. Yes, especially when the knight takes the queen would basically guard that pawn, and it's right. basically about that pawn. Right. So right now, this is the weak spot because his knight is blocking his queen. His bishop is defending. He, nothing's defending this pawn except the king. Exactly. So if, if I take here, king mm -hmm. comes up here. I now have a discover check. And where would I want to go with it? I could also just come into a check if I want. But I kind of like using the discover check first almost, to be honest. Yes, and what the scupper check makes the most sense, especially if he would once again follow the system? Uh, capturing the knight. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, capturing the knight. So if, I, if mm -hmm. I capture the knight, this square and this square become dead. That's dead, that's dead, that's dead, that is dead, that is dead. So he has to go back right to here. Exactly. And then... I have, oh god, I gotta remember where my pieces are. Okay, so I don't have a queen. I have my rook still. Yes. And according to our algorithm of calculation, what shall we first watch out? Uh, I mean, capturing here. Yes, and that would, what would be number two? Uh, just checking. Yes, exactly. So I could drop my knight back to here. Mm-hmm. And then the king is in check again. Can't go yeah. there, can't go there. So I guess the king can go to either one of these two or that. Probably wants to come to this white square because otherwise I get another discover check. Well, I guess I get one either way because I have this as well for discover. Very good, yeah. Um, so then I could capture here if I wanted. But would that give you so much material? You have something more luxury like if after the, king f7. If king f7. With a knight on f6. With a knight on f6. And the I can come f6. right here and then I can take the queen. Yes, and then if you calculate all the material, how much did you gain? We gained upon a knight and a queen and what for a queen give? and yeah, yeah with trade it. huh yep yes yes you solved it very good so Oof. the queen takes g7 oops queen takes g7 king takes g7 knight d7 check and no matter where you go king f7 is the best square otherwise e8 would also disappear right that's why, and then ninety five, and we take on c seven. Yeah. Good, very good. So let's see what is my next example. I should come up with something probably harder. <laughs> Ooh, I'm like taxing my brain on these. <laughs> what could be okay? Let's make this one here. I'm curious actually because it involves a pattern. I don't know if you have seen that pattern. Probably not. Hmm. <laughs> well, I, I mean, right now, actually, like... I totally I've seen under... very few patterns, so... <laughs> yes, but actually, you're much stronger than I thought. Because it's 11... This is not 1100 level, actually. This is higher. Okay, am I but black or white? You're white, but I have to, like, uh, make all these kind of colors disappear. Okay. So, now it should be fine. Okay. So, let's see. First thing is take with check. And then yes. you can take. 
Um, and then I have a knight right here that can check you. And I've got this pawn. I could also have a pawn pushed, but that would just get taken by the king as well and wouldn't do well at all. So if I take, you take, I go here. You're probably pushing to right there. Because then you're threatening my pawn and my knight. And actually, I don't have much pieces left, right? Right. So what do you think is a trump card in that position? With the king right there? No, not with the king right there. I think the game is over. Oh, okay. <laughs> because you sacrificed the queen. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, the wrong way. Okay, so you're saying, like, get off of this, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this basically like, you can rule out because okay, after taking on f8, you have two more check, uh, checks. One is yeah. e7, one is knight e7. Yeah, and then so it, it falls apart. So my other thought is I can push my queen right here, mm -hmm. which then takes, takes, check, and then I have the ability slightly to push forward. Mm, well, let's see. Okay, hold on. So if I go here, you take, I take, you're in check. You have two valid moves. I'm guessing you're going to f8 to block. Obviously, yeah. I then have two checking squares. This one gets taken, and this one gets taken. So you can rule out that move. So that move is also trash. The third move I have is I can just push my pawn. Yes, this is a move which is threatening something that is already number four in the list. Right, and so this is, we're down to just threatening. Um, so I'm threatening taking right here. Mm -hmm. You can either move your rook right there or capture with your queen on my knight. No, because then, no, you can't do that because then I just take it and then you're screwed. And it's mate, yes. Yeah, so you can't and do that. What is the... Yes, yeah, so what is the last option? You mentioned rook e8 as one option. You mentioned queen takes e5. I mean, capturing the knight as a second option. Oh, he can but take black... my queen. Yes, so these three things you have to calculate. Right. So, yeah, so if I push, if you take my queen, I push again and promote, you're in check, and you can only pull this guy back, at which point... I can come to right here with Very a good. check. Then you're either moving or pushing your rook up, which wouldn't work because then I take it and then you're in check again and then you're mated. Mm -hmm. So you're moving away. And then I have my knight take to check mm -hmm. you. You're forced to take unless you want to. Why? Why I'm forced to take? Well, I guess you're not forced to take. You could move your king back but then i bring my knight here mm -hmm. and now you have to move back from a discover mm -hmm. and then ah oh, crap where do i go with my queen then uh that's the pattern i was asking am i just I am i just about. doing a draw pattern here no you do not a draw pattern you do you do the suffocating mate pattern Okay. You're almost there. So Just then I put one. I put my queen on here. You take yes. with your rook, and then I suffocate you on yes. F7. Yes, very, very good. This is amazing stuff. You are doing very good. Good. I'm impressed. I'm super impressed. Of course, I mean, like, sometimes <laughs> it's good to have some guideline, but actually this is, this is good stuff. Whew. So E7 is the number four kind of and i mean i made a list once i gave a seminar and people asked me like how to calculate and okay i never really, really answered that question and then i decided to make a list or make a system because it's a lot easier yeah so e7 is basically the move which is threatening something after you excluded any checks captures stuff like that right so e7 okay you have to take you give the check until here it's more or less easy and here there is that pattern of the suffocate mate. What right. happens after rook takes f7? Uh, after rook takes f7, I just go to uh, e8. Yes, and then you will mate on f8. Yeah. Very good. And that pattern, like the suffocated mate pattern, have you seen it before? Uh, 
Maybe? I've never really seen it in practice like this exactly, but like, I've seen suffocated mates not like this. I've seen it from the, um, the opening where they play, uh, they don't castle they do like the italian or something and then you move your knight up you know it's i forget the name of the gambit it's a, uh, there's a gambit of uh, the four knights gambit with knight g5 it's 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 off the italian they do the italian and then you open with the knight and then yeah i guess it's four knights and then yeah you you play and move and move up you play with your queen out and then they have to bring stuff back and Yes, I think I know this system, but even in this gambit, there is a suffocated mate. There is a shepherd mate pattern, probably, mm -hmm. with a mate on f7, but not the suffocated mate. Okay, I will give you one more exercise, and then I want to um, do something else when we speak about chess strategy. Okay. But okay, one more puzzle just for the fun, because you're doing too good. <laughs> Uh-oh. So let me just see. Uh, okay, that's uh, that should be easy now, but let's see. But I will not tell you why it should be easy because otherwise I will give you <laughs> be careful. Okay. okay. So, okay. Okay. So, here are uh, your black. You have to change. Um, you have to change the board. <laughs> you're black again, and it's black to move. Okay, I am black. All right. Uh, so first thoughts, I can just take mm -hmm. right here. You can take. I can take, uh, and then that just kind of falls flat on its face. So that seems poor. I can check on g3, mm -hmm. which forces your king to move. And then I check on f1, which forces your rook. No, I guess it doesn't force your rook to move. You could just move your king again. Um, but if you take with your rook, then I bring my queen in and have mate. So if you instead move your king back to g1, H1, yeah. Or H1, excuse me. Then... I do have this bishop over here. I wonder if I can get that involved. Mm, maybe I don't need to. Because um, I've brought this guy here, this guy here. So you're not on H1. So now if I... take, Now you can just take right there. So I have this knight... Uh, maybe I just move my queen right here and then just, yeah, I probably just move my queen up and then on the next move, I'm threatening mate. If you take, I'm threatening mate. And if I can, def can I defend the mate on h2? Can you defend the knight on h2? The mate on h2, because you're threatening after oh. queen three, you threat to give a checkmate on h2. And maybe right. white has defending moves. Uh, okay, so queen g3, you can bring your knight here, in which case mm -hmm. I can take it. Oh, does that go bad, though? Because then now I'm According blocking the, my yes. thing. Yes, and he has two knights on the square g4, the knight on f6 and the knight on f2, both right. able to protect. But according to our um, algorithm of calculation, after queen g3, knight g4, what should you watch out first? After queen g3 and then knight to g4, I need to think about taking 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 checks combined then number two is checks and yes. number three is taking so at that point i mean checks takes is bad why because then 
you take it, and I don't have the queen to threaten anymore, and I can't okay, mate you with. Okay, still a horsey horse. Oh, is it another smother? Oh my gosh. Yes, <laughs> that's why I said it should be actually a little bit easier for you because you just had. Oh, I just did a happening. smother. I thought this pawn was gone, but we haven't taken this pawn at all. We've no, danced we around it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, because we're here and there, and then yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you see, like, if you're just disciplined and follow these kind of orders, it's, it's much easier in a way. Yeah, I feel like my vision gets really clouded. Like, I... No, it's not easy. I, I feel like I have really bad vision. And so I, when I try and picture positions in the future, I'll just, like, remove this pawn. And so I'm like, well, then he just escapes to there. So then that doesn't work, you know. Yeah, okay. But this actually, like, if you solve these kind of exercises, then, of course, your vision is getting much, much better. Right. Right. So, I mean, like, I can give you, if you want, you can solve another, like, exercises. Like, I can give you other exercises. Or we will move to chess strategy. Like, we can move. That's strategy. fine. Hmm? I said we can so move. We, That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So we move. Okay. One second. I just have to copy paste. Okay. That's one of my favorite games because it contains a lot of um, positional understanding stuff for chess. Mm -hmm. So, the game was played long time ago in 1922, but actually from the old games you learn nowadays a lot more than from new games in terms of um, basics, because at this time the basics were not so much well known. That's why people met more mistakes from the <laughs> positional point of view, and that's why it's easier to get these examples. Uh -huh in order to um, yeah, explain it to pupils. But I will not start from the beginning because it will like not be important, the opening. The opening at these times is anyway nothing good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're white. Okay. Okay. And black moved here at five. And okay, my first question is, what do you think? It's a good move or it's a bad move? Uh, for black to make that move? Yes. Um, okay, well, let's see. So, it threatens my knight. Yes. Uh, so, that's something. It does slightly weaken the king side, because the rook isn't on f8. If the rook was on f8, I would feel more confident making that move. With the mm -hmm. rook not on that file, though, it does technically open it, but, you know, it. it I feel like... I'd rather open it with a, a support behind it. Okay. What else you can say about that move? Um, I can say... Oh, jeez. The bishop is still, I guess, pinned here. So that move kind of stops a defender of that. Or, or doesn't like get in the way and free up any pinning if that's something. Um, it also potentially opens up. Eh, well, I guess you've got a knight and you got a lot of stuff defending f6, so nothing on that really. Um, so, uh, would you consider that your move in the game? Right. I don't, I wouldn't make that move with f5. Not unless I had the rook on f8, but in this current situation, I don't think I would make that move. But okay, basically, like the reason why you wouldn't make that move is because you feel shaky about your king connected to the f7 square and that your rook is not on f8, right? Essentially, yeah. Yes. Um, anything else you may spot in connection with the move on f5? Have you heard about the rule that every pawn move is creating a weakness? Yeah, so pawn moves create squares behind them into the side of them. So mm -hmm. this knight right here, this square is now no longer able to be kicked except by another minor piece of some sort. So good, when, yeah. when that gets made, this knight can come here. Obviously, that can mm -hmm. be taken. And then the pawn's there, though. And then we're just creating more weaknesses behind because, once again, we don't have the pawns to push and do anything to kick off this square. Yes, yeah, so this square we call in chess, it's a so-called hole. Okay, so because it creates a hole. And 
let's create a hole yes and now i mean just um imagine you have the possibility to take three minor pieces of the board from white and from black right just to make it in the best possible way what should you keep for white and in the worst possible way then what black should keep to make it very attractive for white uh so i would love to have a knight or a bishop on this square mm -hmm. and him to not have a dark square bishop or these knights to be able to kick it so then this square is permanently protected forever very very good yes exactly i mean even like on these kind of central holes i mean usually like knights are more annoying than bishops of course the bishop on e5 like in comparison to the bishop on c8 yeah would still be a great monster but <laughs> i mean the knight on f3 like being on e5 against a bishop is even more of a nightmare right so basically f5 is a very bad move from the positional point of view not because of the king side as the square on f7 white cannot basically um well exploit right now but it is a very bad move because first of all it leaves this kind of pawn behind yeah we call it like the i mean i don't know the the english um term for it but it is like similar to translate it with a retarded pawn you know <laughs> because <laughs> that guy will never like move in front because that square is basically taken and he will not have good functions but we call it a backwards pawn yeah backwards that's that's because yes that's the right translation yeah. i didn't know how it the was the politically correct term i suppose <laughs> yes but i liked actually my translation because it suits very much to the ability <laughs> of that form <laughs> so yes so basically after f5 the knight is attacked what shall we do um the knight or what shall we do okay so thoughts here are one, I can come over here um, with it, which is protected, and then you just have this knight attacking it, uh, which would free up this hole. But what I don't really like about that is then I would lose the protection on this square. So I kind of really yes. like having that protection. I can tell you moving that knight on c5 has a much bigger problem than losing the protection on e5. What is the biggest problem of moving the knight? Oh, it's actually double hit. Uh, not really, because the bishop on e7 is pinned. The bishop oh, cannot yeah. play yeah, on you're c5. Right. But there is another piece, actually, which might not be amused if you move the knight. So if I move the knight... What piece will not be amused? Uh, these are all what? fine. This dude's fine. Oh, yeah, my bishop's unprotected. Okay, exactly. so so first thing is I just trade my bishop, I guess. Very and, good, because anyway, yeah. I mean, like, this, um, this exchange on e7 is helping us because we managed already one goal. We got rid of the dark-colored bishop, right. so the squares automatically become weaker. Yeah. That's what happened in the game. Now, queen takes e7 happened. Now the question is, where do you think the knight has the best potential? So now, let's see. Um, this knight... Okay, so his squares available are these. So he has a lot of options. This is death. This is death. Uh, that's technically alive. Okay. So all the rest of those are viable options. Um, so if I go over here, knight, me, queen. So that doesn't work. So that square is gone. If, which which square is gone? I mean, like you have uh, C5, have, sorry. Uh, C5 is, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, because yeah, I'm just gone, losing yes. a pawn. Mm -hmm. um, if I come over to G5, it's, it's not really threatening a ton right now. Um, and then I'm having to keep this guy defending that knight. And mm -hmm. I really want to move this knight to this spot eventually. Yeah. So I feel like that just becomes 
a weird place for it because it can't really go anywhere from there. Exactly, because uh, for example, also like after knight g5, if black wants, black can push h6, right. attacking the knight, the knight has to go on the rim. Yep, and then it I'm is. just nowhere. Yes, and the, there's a phrase in chess saying like the, the knight on the rim is dim. Yeah. So this is exactly <laughs> hitting the point here. That's why knight g5 makes no sense. Very good. Yep. Um, so that leaves me coming back to these spots. Uh, mm -hmm. If I come back to c3, I'm blocking any protection on my bishop. Not that it's under threat currently. Um, but I am putting pressure on his knight on d5, which is something because trading pieces right now probably doesn't seem bad if I can get on that uh, dark square. Um, if I come back to d2, I'm just kind of chilling, and then I guess I'm then looking at this move to get onto c5 and have the same exact thing that I'm doing on e5, where I'm just on one of those annoying squares. It's that he can't super get off. Very, very good explanation. I'm really impressed. <laughs> Thank you. And then if I come to G3, uh, I think I'm I'm just, I don't see anything there. So I don't think G3 is. Yes. So I think D2 is the square. Very good. D2 is the best square here. But there is actually the opportunity, but this is not for positional reasons, but for tactical reasons, to go on G3. But that implies that if you go on g3, you have to push e4 to make this whole like concept like work out. Uh -huh. That means like, like okay, you can play castle, rook e1, e4. Then you would exchange that pawns and you would hit on e6. Okay. But this is absolutely not necessary to play dynamic here because dynamic means like tactically in right. a way, because you have already this really two bad squares okay c5 is not yet that bad because of b6 move possibility but okay for this reason 92 is the most natural one very well so now b5 was played i guess i don't have to ask you about the move if it is good or bad <laughs> um so b5 is just fully inviting c5 to be an opening for me so that's a great yes. great move for me um, so at this point, I'm probably just trading because I'm just trying to kick all those minor pieces away so I can just have full reign on the two squares, e5 and, or c5 and e5. Very good, yes. Bishop takes c5 was polite. It's, in my opinion, also the best positional move. Of course, you can also move that bishop, but there is no need because, okay, if you just exchange all the important minor pieces and are left behind with that knight on f3 against the bishop on c8 that's a very good thing mm -hmm. so c takes d5 was played and now what would you play here so at this point um i can either continue that plan of bringing my knight over to b3 and then up to c5 um if i want i also have Hmm, let's see. Could also just push right into that e5 square, but I don't really like that I'm potentially just giving up this d4 pawn if I do that, because his knight still on d7 is just a... He just takes, and then I've lost everything that I worked for. Yes, you lost that potential very, very strong square. Yeah, so I'm probably either threatening the b5 pawn with my queen mm -hmm. or i'm castling right now okay castling is a very good choice that happened in the game this can't be wrong bringing the king in safety very good so a5 force blade Next okay ball. so now i mean always before you tell me a move you would do always yeah. think about like the meaning of your opponent's moves because sometimes right or not sometimes usually also opponents have some thoughts and some plans so sometimes those moves could like imply a certain threat or right. idea or something so in my opinion his threat is that he's going to push down to a4 
thus preventing me from getting to this square and getting up. Very, very good. Yes, exactly. So, so that's why I would do something in response to that. Um, but and what would that response be? I guess well, I could I could just play my queen to b3 now if I want, because if he pushes, then I take. Uh, I could also do something with these pawns, but what's the right way? But what else could you improve? I mean, like, a4 is a threat preventing knight b3. a4 but prevents... No. I oh, mean, oh, his black, a4. Yeah, black's, yeah, yeah. Black's a4 is preventing knight b3. That's what you were talking about about right. at the beginning right so if it is preventing in the next move so i could do it right now if i want absolutely because with knight b3 you also get your um goal a little bit closer of exchanging the knight on d7 and exploiting e5 for right. good right yes so knight b3 was played a4 knight c5 now black took on c5 how would you capture back i would capture with my queen yes very good that happened in the game is okay obviously there is a possibility to take with the pawn right. but that would be actually a little, a little bit sad because you lose the spot on right. e5 i mean you still have it but it's not the same anymore with a pawn on d4 it was a lifetime hole right. without that pawn it is not yet a lifetime hole because okay maybe even there are most like e5 now and then you would be a little bit upset yep that's why queen takes c5 happened in the game queen takes c5 and obviously rook takes c5 right now b4 was played what would you play next here are two good um options okay so b4 gets played let's see if i play a3 they either push and lock the position or take take and then we've locked that position so i kind of like that move and then his rook's not on an open file as opposed to if i do it this way then he gets on an open file so i'm liking a3 initially okay but if you play a3 actually currently the only one who has an open file is white right after a3, I take, I take, then it is not only you who has an open file because the next move could be what move for black? Well, couldn't I play to b2 before he does? Or b1? Yes, he could play the rook to b8 before you play the rook to b1. Oh, because I have to take it back. Yeah, that's right. I'm taking back, so it's his tempo. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so basically like with a3, you unnecessarily open a file for him and give him counter play. Yeah. Currently, like even if you give your opponent here, let's say five moves in a row without attacking a piece, of course, he cannot objectively improve the position. Yeah. Because yeah. the only way to improve the position would be to get the control of the only open file or the control of the square on e5 but right. this is not possible so i guess these are my two moves because yeah it's you're like right the, if he pushes either pawn i just push and close and then it's that's the absolutely. end absolutely yes there's so. no point to give your opponent counter play when you're having a objectively positionally winning position yeah so, so i'm probably why... bringing my rook first Yes, that's what happened in the game, but you can, like, uh, knight e5 and rook c1 are exchangeable. There's, yeah. there's yeah. no difference. Bishop a6 and knight e5 was played, and now rook e b8. And now there is coming a moment in the game where a lot of um, unexperienced players believe that certain pieces or certain things are not important. You have an idea what I'm talking about? Uh, the kingside pawns. Well, the kingside pawns not um, entirely, but also connected. But, you know, like in a lot of uh, like lower leveled games, actually, like the players never work with their king. Right. Moving and these out and moving this guy up is my thought. Yes. But I mean, like, why would you go to F4? What happens if you go to, for example, like you want to get the king out in order to activate the king. Right. You have the option of playing f3, 
you have the option of playing f4, you even have the option of playing h3, and you have the option of playing h4, and you have the option of playing g3. Right. What looks the most natural to you? Um, h4 is probably the most natural look right now. He doesn't Why? really have any pushing potential with this pawn. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not worried about him pushing this. If he had his his you know rook right here then i'd be more worried because then he's doing some stuff and so then i'd mm -hmm. probably be more inclined but right now push takes i guess then he can go there but then i can already defend it and so very good yeah so h4 is probably the move i like the most it stays on dark squares and very good and i i, I don't know this light square bishop uh, I, I don't like the idea of like my king being kind of on the white squares like this i'd rather like follow on dark squares impressive yeah so h4 wasn't played in the game but this is absolutely like a move which could have been played as well because it's not weaker at all than the move played what would be the second natural move instead of h4 here in this position f4 is my thought but what happens with f4 when you play f4 what 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 basically you take we lock this position completely Yes, but I mean, just imagine like one time, like, or at some point your king will move. Right. Would, what kind of square would be nice for the oh, king? Oh, yeah, he'd want to go to that dark square. Yeah, we might even like at some point get to f4 and then to e5. Especially like when the rooks are all exchanged, the king on e5 could be a very impressive piece because yeah. you could attack that guy and everything. Yep. So with f4, you unnecessarily like blocking your own route yeah because then i have to go this whole route around yeah okay so in that Basically, case i'd move the g yeah. and i why guess not, why you want or to move f3 the g? f3 would be f3 the move. was yeah. played here yeah, the idea of f3 is to take that route with the king right but what you said with h4 is absolutely great as well because you can also go basically that move with the king yeah so that's why actually um h4 is as strong as f3 but f3 was played in the game and now b3 happened your reaction lock that bad boy up on a3 yes very good that's why i mean not to open any files not to give any counterplay to your opponent yep. h6 was played next move so now i'm probably playing h4 to prevent his g5 push so then takes takes you know i guess he still has that so i could also just eh, but then if i play f4 now that's bad so i mean let's if in case your opponent plays g5 now i mean yeah. let's imagine you do nothing and you just wait right make the rubbish move do you think g5 is helping him uh so if he plays g5 i mean the thing i don't like is it's locking my king out mm -hmm. um from my route so like you know my goal is to work over to that and g5 would kind of shut that down yes this is a very logical explanation and i totally agree with you but what does that move do to black's king i mean it opens his king up a ton for sure yes it's opened the king up a ton for sure that's very good because the thing is like he cannot even like allow himself to open up the position with g5 because okay there are always ideas with rook c7 rook e7 getting those rooks on the so-called battery seven strength that's a kind of that sentence for the king yeah that's why actually like if uh, black pushes g5 you can even like, for example, like, okay, let's imagine you just do nothing like a rubbish move, like rook c3, doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And even if you push that, I can attack it. So, I mean, you cannot really capture it because, okay, I will get that guy, f4 is mine. Right. And at some point I might even be able, okay, maybe rook c3 was indeed rubbish, like to get the rook on the h file and to attack the king right. with getting the rook on h5, for example. Yeah. That's why, I mean, g5 is not the move which is harming you. It is rather harming black's king. So I'd so, probably rather just go here then. Very or, good. King f2 was yeah. played, yes. Yeah. King h7 happened and now he pushed h4, but not for the sake of preventing g5. It was 
first of all for just getting that maneuver done without having a check right and what else is now a positional threat after h4 if it was white to move um if it's white to move right now a positional threat yeah what would be a positionally very strong move in general not necessarily only about this position uh let's see if i push g4 then we're threatening a bunch of breakdown over there but then that kind of exposes my king um i could just bring up my rook to c7 and start putting threat and pinning this pawn on g7 that is a dynamic move oh okay what's the difference you to, <laughs> the difference if you make a dynamic move it means like you go into the attacking mode Okay. Spot the weakness on g7, so that it's a kind of attacking tactical dynamic move. Okay. But when I speak about the positional move, it's like I really improve certain kind of things like structures, squares okay. control. So now I guess I'm threatening h5 because yes, then I've got this squared protected. Absolutely right. And also imagine like we have an end game with only pawns and kings left. If you have a pawn on h5, then it's very hard at some point, like one pawn on h5 without the king, let's say on h7, somewhere on the other wing. These two pawns are as good as one single pawn on h5 because they cannot like create any pass pawns. Right. Because one pawn on h5 is basically fixing the pawn structure g6, g7 yeah. and h6. So in pawn endings, this is really like, uh, it's like, gold you know i will give you an example too or like after that i will give you an example where you can see that in a very obvious way okay h5 is a very strong threat also from the positional point of view rook f8 was played what do you think what does your opponent wants with rook f8 uh he wants to push to f4 and then exactly. takes and then hits so i can move my king here takes takes mm -hmm. and then that protects it so very good probably my yes king. king g3 was played because there's no need to give your opponent any chance of opening files right and with king g3 it's the most natural way to prevent it if g5 then i think black's king will not like it after you take go on a check here and then bring yeah. that guy to c7 and probably it will not take long <laughs> and black's king will be mated yeah very good so that's why after rook fb8 sorry i have to see where we are we are at uh rook no we are at here rook f8 i know we are yes ah yeah. we are rook, rook king g3 and he went back that already proves that plex position is in this sort of way hopeless what do you think what would you do if in case he plays rook c8 I mean, I guess I'm probably fine trading down because I have a superior position. Yes. I mean, like here you can already consider basically to go in the end game with bishop and knight because the thing is like that, um, well, the black king is very far away from the protection of the pawn on e6. Right. And you could, for example, like maneuver your knight to what particular square here, which square would be very tempting for the knight. Uh, I mean, I'd love to have this and this, but I can also be, I want to get on a dark square. So this mm -hmm. is a pretty good square right here. But I mean, find a square with a double attack. Uh, okay, let's see. A square with a double attack this square that's one and then what is the other square which is accessible in only two moves uh, and there all the pawn will be falling right so i could have thread on this one so this square i can't get there this square yeah so both of Very those squares good. so basically already like after knight d3 combined with knight c5 you're winning the decisive pawn in order to basically win the game yep very good that's why actually like um black cannot even afford to trade the bishops 
uh, the rook, sorry. So after rook f p eight, now I mean, how do we improve the position? H five is one. Yes, h five is of course um, absolutely playable. He didn't play h five. King f four is the second good move. What would be number three and number four? I mean, here everything goes wrong. <laughs> so it's not like that you can go wrong in a specific <laughs> way. Um. So either one of those, I could also move this knight or move this rook to the seventh rank. Very good. That's um, what happened in the game. Okay. Okay, but anyway, I mean, like, it's absolutely right. H5 is great. King F4 is great. Rook C6 is great. And Rook C7 is great. So, I mean, it's a luxury choice. Right. So Bishop B5 was played. And now how to improve further the position? Uh, probably one of those two moves that we stated before. Or yes, you can and... move here and then work up like this so you get both rooks on the seventh. And okay, then you're also but imagine I go rook e7. What would be um, Black's best chance after rook e7? What is your weakest pawn in your position? What do you think? Objectively. This dude. E3 is not so weak because I can protect oh, it. this guy. Yeah, that guy. After rook e7, you do what? You give up the file, the only file in this position. I can sacrifice the pawn on e6 because I will try to hit the guy on b2 and that might be very painful. Hmm. So hold so on. If I, if I go e7, mm -hmm. then you're sacrificing... That pawn on e6, I will go rook c8 and immediately seek my chances. And then I'm and the trading, move. and then your next move is to here. Yes, but okay, gotcha. you will not be trading. You will just quickly move that rook back to the square where he was and just like. Right. Go, uh, yeah, offer that. Your mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in chess, it's sometimes also like um, very hard psychological to admit your mistake. Yeah. And a lot of players don't want to admit their mistakes, but sometimes just to admit it and to go back is much better than to just like pretend that you have spotted everything <laughs> and do something else. Right. This, is, this is very, very much related to psychology. And that's why I mean, like I learned in my life after the years that, OK, sometimes to admit a mistake is not so bad <laughs> after all, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I guess I would go back. So at this point, I'm here, here, or I'm looking at some knight to oh. this square move. But yes, but how can you stabilize the c file a little bit? How can I stabilize the the c file? The c -file? Mm -hmm. Does it need stabilization? Well, the thing <laughs> is, like at some point, you would like to play rook e7 without having issues on rook c8, right? So a move which is prophylactically preventing rook e8 after rook e7. Yes, very good. Yeah, so I guess I'm going to c5. Or like I said, that was my idea with getting my knight to here, was then I'm I... putting threat. But then I guess that move exists. Yes, but also with a knight on d6, I mean, what is your threat with a knight on d6? What is Threaten the, the bishop of... and keep threatening this square right here. So that they yes, can't get on. Yes, but I mean, like, okay. First of all, like, okay, you threat the bishop, but the bishop anyway is a bad piece. So if you exchange right. it, black will be very happy. Right. And it's like taking the square on c8, no need for it because you anyway control it now. I mean, your goal basically is to either hit on e6 or on g7 on the long run. Right. For that, actually, you just need to stabilize the only potential weakness you have, which is a pawn on b2. That's why rook c5 was played, because now the threat is rook e7, as the bishop also is under attack. Oh, and then I also have protection from the pawn here as well, if for yes, some reason have something else happens. Yeah. Yes. So now bishop a6 was played, and now, I mean, Aljechin was exploiting the fact that the bishop left the diagonal, um, his diagonal e8, a4. Mm -hmm. So what could you do now to exploit that fact? So, I mean, I can bring my knight right here to just put a it's, bunch of threat. Yes, you threat the rook. The rook will obviously move. 
Yep. What else can you do? Um, I can also make that play over if I want to e8. This is possible now, actually. This wasn't played. This is one of the good moves in this mm -hmm. position. Um, I can make the two moves that I've been waiting to make all day. Yes, <laughs> I mean, okay, that's a problem. Is the position is so good that obviously you have a right. lot of moves guiding yourself to Rome. But, I mean, he I can the fact... Move here? I can... Oh, well, no. Um... What did the bishop, which square the bishop controlled? The bishop, when oh, it was he here, started. was yes. was controlling all of, the, I guess it's still controlling that. So it's given up control of these three squares. Yes, and one square can be used in a very nice way. Uh, let's see. I mean, what are the weakest spots in Black's position? Well, yes. This easy. pawn. And the g7 pawn. And then, yes. yeah. Yeah, right there, there, and then kind of there if this guy moves. Um, so, if I go here, I can have a threat. Eh. You're a very tactical, dynamic player. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> you always want to attack the big guys. <laughs> I do. I yeah. do. Um, I mean, I do like this d7 move. Yes, I know why, because you see this kind of check on f6 and you're tripping about mate. Right, yeah. I mean, what would be a needle stitch? I mean, just imagine the guy, he went <sighs> to c5, Yeah. he got the bishop away, and now basically he's just underlining that his opponent did a mistake, even though he can't do mistakes because black's position is objectively hopeless. Right. But how to give a kind of needle stitch to your opponent after bishop a6? What move could be a needle stitch from the psychological point of view? Because chess sometimes is also very psychological. And if you can give a stitch to your opponent from the psychological point of view, it is quite, um, it has quite an impact sometimes on emotions as well. So it's, pushing right to c6 and threatening the pawn and the yeah. bishop. And just underlining basically or telling your opponent you better shouldn't have played bishop a6. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, you, you're laughing in a way like, they are really like, <laughs> for example, like Karpov, he was a master in needle stitches. Right. So basically, whatever like small thing the opponent gave, he exploited in such a way that he basically met his opponent feel miserable in a way because okay i mean the position is anyway badly lost it's yeah. not about that but i mean just to underline how bad the position is you can give these kind of needle stitches and um when i play against anna Kramling, that's how i feel she she doesn't just beat me but she abuses me and makes me feel bad about every move that i've made well, that's, I mean, the thing is, like, when I give simultans and I play against weaker players, I never, like, smash them, like, immediately because I want <laughs> them to feel like they had a long game, they had some fun. They, I mean, sometimes, you know, like, how happy kids are saying, like, oh, I, I managed to hold for 30 moves, you know? No, and she doesn't do that. She takes everything at the start and then just toys with me and just does discover checks and... Has fun yes. windmilling me, you know, just I everything. She's a young girl, and I'm like the kind one. <laughs> you're, you're maybe older and kind. She's young and and just wants to to have fun destroying. <laughs> yes, I understand that, but okay, I think it, it depends, of course, what is your goal. I mean, my goal is not to like show weaker players how weak they are. My goal is like to motivate them to get better and to mot to motivate people like or like like players who are like playing for fun and enjoy the game. Yeah. You let them live longer, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At least this is my kind of philosophy. <laughs> okay. Rook c6 was played. Rook e8. And now one of your moves is getting into the game. Woo. Um, so now I am playing, uh, probably just pushing my pawn. Yes, that's one option. What is the second one? My king to f4. Yes, these are like exchangeable. It was first king f4 played. Yeah. Now king g8 and now h5. Bishop f1 was played. What would you do now? 
uh, ignore it and go for the kill. Um, let's see. I would... Hmm. I can't do any of that. Make a needle stitch move. Yeah, so I mean at this point... How do I punish him for that? I mean, I love my knight on this square. And then allowing for some of this. A needle stitch move means basically like you don't attack the king in order to mate him. Mm -hmm. you basically make a move to basically upset your opponent hoping for any kind of counter chances so what would be this move okay a move to hope for countering chances no not to hope not to hope oh, okay <laughs> i mean like you can also like answer me the question what move would give the opponent some hope here because obviously she too was attacked I mean, they would get some hope if they won a pawn, I guess. Yes, okay, you will not give them the pawn. How right. else they would get hope? They'd get hope if this file opened up and they could get a check on my king. Very good. So, with, Which means which move would give them hope? So this would be hopeful for them because then they exactly. can take. Exactly, because there's absolutely no need to open up that um, file on um, the F file as well it doesn't improve your position but right. it gives a file to your opponent so what would be here's a needle stitch so i yes. guess play g3 and just be annoying yes g3 is such a needle stitch <laughs> <laughs> basically just telling your opponent okay you played bishop f1 good for you you can go back <laughs> that's what happened <laughs> So, and now, now actually, like, what why did actually, like, when we go back from the start of this position after trading the queens, you understood white basically exploited the C file to a maximum. Yeah. He got the pawn structure fixed in the best possible way. He activated the king. His pawns are all looking beautifully. Now it's time to execute. So and now, now he found a way to basically hit one of the biggest weakness so he took an eye on g7 how did you do that took an eye on g7 Ooh. yeah so let me see if his rook goes there he's protected by the knight and then that would allow me to make this push up. You know, sometimes I feel like that someone is giving you the notation. Right? <laughs> <laughs> or like you have some kind of secret voice yeah. in your... Keep it coming. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, Sakaru. <laughs> Yeah, you got some hidden comments. Okay, I didn't check <laughs> your, like, I should maybe observe your check. Your They're chat. not saying oh, anything. They didn't get it. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> so, rook f7 was played. Very good. Impressive. King h7, next move. Yeah, it's a good teacher. Um, okay, so now, I mean, I'm probably just pushing so then I can threaten the take, yeah. I mean, like, you can memorize if you manage to basically double the rooks on the seventh rank in case you are white and this is your opponent, right? Mm -hmm. That this kind of buttery, we call it a kind of buttery on the seventh rank, at least in German expression. Um, this is usually a very, well, it's a dead sentence in a way because if this guy is falling, then the king is just in a horrible situation. Right. Okay. Rook g8 was played, and now actually the tactic involves, because it's very typical when you outplayed your opponent and you reach the maximum, then usually when your position is superior, automatically tactics are arising. And now maybe you can find a good way here to execute as the game only lasted three or four moments. So I'm guessing that my only goal right now is to kick this dude off of this square. Because once that happens, this yes. is essentially takeable. Yes. Now, there is a slight nice. issue. Okay, so it's this and this. Because I just want to get my knight to right here. 
because he can't take and he can't move. Very, very good. Impressive, yes. That's what happened. I think to have someone whispering. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 97 happened, but okay, the, the main question comes now. After King H8, how do you win here? After King H8, I didn't even think about him going there. Um, yeah, let's see. Easy tactics on F6. If he right? takes, and I take, and then I take, and then he takes, then that doesn't work. Um, if I, boy, come to this square and he takes, then I win. Very good. So this is already something which you can calculate, right? So yep. after knight of six, the rook has to move. Yep. What is the only good square for the rook? So I go there and the rook goes... I mean, he has to get away so this dude can move, and he probably wants to put threat on me somehow. I mean, if he comes here, then if I take, he takes, and then yeah, so he probably is just going to f8. Yes, so after going to F8, what should you calculate according to the algorithm of calculation? Okay, you calculate that rook takes F8. What else you can capture here? I because can capture a pawn right here. And Very then, good. Then he's stuck. Then, yes, and after taking on G7, what will Black do, obviously? Uh, he will... Jeez, what will he do? Uh, just... Well, the rook is on f8 and the knight is on f6. Yeah, so I mean, I guess he just takes the rook or the knight and. Yes, and then you have to calculate further. You have still some checks left and you have some moves left with a threat. Yeah, so at that point, I'm. If I push, it's a check. He moves. If I push. Mm. To he check moves to he moves to f8 and then i push here and it's mate no because i will take on g7 and i will oh crap oh dang it yeah you're right on the planet oh dang but it what ask, what else you have in that position but the check on h8 you mean like we had like captures checks and moves with a threat what move could be a move with a threat after king f8 king f8 I can repeat if it's easier because the visualization is not so easy, obviously. Yeah. Um, so a move with the threat would be my king threatening his Very rook. Good. So, yes. And then what happens after king e5 in the final position? What is I feel doing? like I am watching Blue's Clues. With so my I'm here old. and I'm Keep here and his rook is there. Mm -hmm. And your king is on f8. And my yes. king is here and his king is here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't think it matters where he goes. He loses. Yes, he loses the rook <laughs> on f6 or his mate, yes. Right, yeah. I mean, he either lo loses it here or he loses that there. Yes, that's how the game ended. Very good. But <laughs> the, the, the key move, of course, which has to be seen is, okay, you can also play cook king e5 on the spot. Right. It's the same stuff. Okay. Yeah. That's what happened and black resigned. But um, checking twice on h7, g7, then king e5 is the very same. Wonderful. Oof. You are much stronger than your rating, actually. Thank you. Because Good I gave, coaching. I gave, no, but I mean, like, I gave this position to two girls, like, uh, about 15, 1600, and they did less good on that one. Sweet. So I can tell you, like, I have some experience with certain levels. So you did very good. Let me check you on studies. Okay. Have you ever solved study puzzles? I don't know what that means, but... <laughs> I mean, studies basically like are... Um, when someone gives you a chess study, it's like a chess tactical exercise, but okay. a study usually always has one solution and it contains motives which hardly happen on the board. Okay. 
I mean, sometimes really beautiful kind of things. But uh, still, it is improving your imagination. Even so, I would always suggest not to solve so many studies, but to solve tactical exercises, which really happened in games. Okay. So let me just get you something easy. I mean, easy in a way, easy <laughs> for you. Okay, some of my chats must have seen these examples, but they have to be like merciful now with me because I have to give you something which is for you solvable. <laughs> and appreciate that. Be, be, be gentle, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because, yes, one second, I'll just set it. And then I will tell you something. I will give you this example about the pawn structure where you will see the point. So here we go. And you are white. Okay. And it's white to move. Okay, so let's see. Um, this guy is obviously pinned. Very good. But I want to push him. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably bringing my bishop right here because if I sack the bishop then I push and then I get a queen and then the game's yes. over so I think that's my move because if they take they're, then I push and then they, they have no way to uh, well, I guess they can go back here actually oh dang it never mind um, and then I push and then they take and then I'm still screwed hmm Hmm. Well, I mean, like, you, you spot all the patterns. Now, I mean, you just have to sort it in the right, right. order. Right. Okay. So, first things first, I take, I push this pawn. Are you sure that you first push that pawn? Of course not. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, like, okay, I, this, this exercise I'm giving you now, <laughs> it's clear that white has no problems in making a draw. Right. So... Right? Obviously, white wants to win. After c6, how is black making a draw in the most simple way? So, I push here. Mm -hmm. They have to take it, or I push mm -hmm. and I'm gone. Well, if, if you take it, maybe then, once again, I'm lost because of bishop d3. But okay. What can I do after c6 to make a draw on the spot? Take my yes. pawn here. And then take that pawn, and then you have a bishop against one or two pawns. Okay, or... you're right. So, that's a draw. So, that doesn't work. Yes. So, oh boy. Okay, so if I take here, that's check. So you're forced. Will not help you. It doesn't look like it's helping. I'm just working through it. Um, okay, so if I take, if I go here. Yeah. And you take. Mm -hmm. Then I can push this dude right here. But we thought this is not good because of bishop b5. The bishop goes right. here. The bishop and... goes back. And then I don't have any good drawing. Because... Yes. Oh, dear. So, instead... Man, How to I... interrupt that diagonal? Yeah. I mean, that, but then you're just taking it. Not that diagonal. I mean, the diagonal B5, E8, how to interrupt it. Yeah, how to get in here. I mean, the first move must be bishop D3, otherwise bishop takes E6 is coming. Right. So, and it's draw on the spot. So I go here, and that takes... And now you have to make a very tricky intermediate move and block the most important diagonal you already spotted, which is the problem. Right. So... Hmm. We already said c6 doesn't work, right? Why is c6 in this order not working? You oh, wait. Oh, I pushed that pawn first. Oh, okay. I, th I thought I already canceled that out. So, yeah, I go there, and then I make that push, because then you block it, and then we... Exactly. And the thing is, like, if I ignore the pawn on c6, it moves to c7. Right, and, and then it ends there. Yeah. So, basically, like, first we distract, 
then we close the diagonal before we defense. make the push of e7 yes so you have to take otherwise c7 is coming and you're not holding yep. any of these pawns and now e7 and the problem is that I after need. the but yeah. after that move how you prevent the last um counter attack or like uh, hope for black i just moved my king over to g6 very good yes that's what happened and the game is over you can give one more check but then after that the well you will queen and win so you see that how studies Ooh. work one solution okay. and kind of patterns like here it was distraction one and then closing the diagonal two. right i didn't see that yeah i i thought that i had tried closing the diagonal on the first go around so I just was like, oh, C6 doesn't work. But that's the move before E7, which makes sense. So I give you one more. Because, okay, I'm not a big fan of studies in general. This <laughs> is a hard one. But let me let me see anyway. I mean, like, you're more talented than I thought, especially when you give me this rubbish rating, which you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> it's my rating. Uh, have I said I lose on time a lot? <laughs> Not your rating. Okay, maybe, I don't know, but okay. From what I saw, this is not your rating, but I have to. Okay. Am I black or white here? You're white. Am I on the right side? I think so. This is, this is, this is a harder one, obviously. Okay, so. Let's see all sorts of stuff. I have checks on here, here, here. So I have mm -hmm. three checks. One check with capture. Two checks. I have no threats on queen except this piece giveaway, so that seems poor. One second. Don't actually always exclude your thoughts, I mean, on the spot. Look, like, a little bit deeper. I mean, like you say, rook a1, it's giving away something, and you immediately block it. Right. What but then I get a royal knight for a royal fork. Yeah, yes. that's a good point. I mean, if you look at the position, maybe, like, how much... Squares does Black's queen have? Uh, they've got the uh, they've got this square, and, yes, and they can what? take this square right here. Yes, these two squares the queen has very good. Yeah, I mean just imagine Black is to move and takes on d5. What would you do? If Black is to move and takes on d5, then. Is my rook on a1 or on a8 right now? The rook is still where it was uh, from the... Um, okay, so you're saying if this is just black to move from the start. Yes, so gotcha. if just imagine there's queen takes d5 happening. Okay. Uh, if that happens, then... Let's see, if I check, that doesn't work, because then you just come over here. So I'd probably be checking on f3... You have to check on a three and you have a check on a four, right? Right. So, I mean, like after check on f three, there is king obviously not c5 because then you would capture the queen by rook a5 check. Right. But maybe king e4 and then there is not so much you can do. True. Here, this example, like what you always have to watch out, what you can already see where the geometry of that position is, it must be related to a fork. Because you see, how many, you see already so many squares by the queen running into forks. Right. This on h2, this on a1. There must be some more to come. I can already promise you that. Mm -hmm. so, um, so basically what you have to do is here to, since the pattern is obviously about night fox and in studies, once you like uh, see a pattern, it's very easy then to understand you have to look for this pattern in all kind of situations. That's why I don't like studies because once the pattern is clear, you know in what direction to think in the game, this will not happen usually. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so if I go here, mm -hmm. that takes out all of these. I guess these are the only ones. Yeah. Um, the only square is basically on e5 left because if the king goes on c5... Then, then I go up left. here and I get the... I skewer it yes. and then it's dead. So the king yes, has to go here. 
Yes, and now where is the pattern between the fork, the rook, and the knight? Which move? Um, so now, if the rook comes here, then those are dead. That can't go. I mean, he can just run away, though. So I don't like that. If the knight goes right here, then that's a check on you. This square's blocked. My rook's still right there. These, these become dangerous. E6 is also blocked. No, it's not, because the queen is there. So, yeah, I mean, the e6 square is a problem. Yeah. So, mine, just not to make it too difficult for you, so basically, we have the position, okay, let's say I, I make this move, and we get the same position, right? Right. So, we said king c5, we can rule out, basically, and king e5 is to right. come. That's... And here's a motif connected to these guys in order to make a fork. How would you usually win a queen if, well, you had the chance of hitting a protector square, which is not right yet protected. How would I win this queen, this queen right now? You're saying? Yes. I mean, like, how would you win the queen if, well, black is not allowed to capture anything? What move I mean... is here? Like, yes, this move. <laughs> yeah. That's why, I mean, like, these kind of motives you should always check, even though right. at the beginning this is hanging, because the rook is objectively not hanging. Why? Because the rook is on the root of your knight. It's again this motif spot. Got it. Very good, yes. That's why I mean like in the moment Interesting. like yes, this is this this is pattern like recognition. In the mo in the moment when you spot already this pattern of rook a one and you see that that would be also on the root of the knight, you would already start thinking in this direction. Gotcha. So after rook a so sorry, after rook a one <laughs> Okay, you would never solve this study alone. I mean, trust me, it's <laughs> too hard. But I mean, like, just to explain you how you would get to that point. Yeah. So, I mean, rook a1 is a very logical move because you already can rule out that move. Yep. And you can rule out that move. Right. And you can rule out that move. So there's so literally the, one move here. Yes, one move. And how, after that move, how to continue to hunt the queen. So at this point also related to the root of the knight. Yeah. So let's see. At this point, if I check this king, then he still has to go up to one of those two, which doesn't seem to do a lot for me. Yes. How to attack the queen? To attack the queen, I can go to Mr. here because then I have knight, this then you threat. Can do an IO doll. Exactly. So uh, we go rook g1. After rook g1, what is the only move for black? Capture the rook and lose <laughs> that piece. Um, I mean, I guess they can take this pawn now. Yeah, so take that pawn on d5, and now, of course, like, okay, if we, now we look at the same pattern, but from the different way. Right, from the other side. And, yes, so now we give, obviously, the check on g4. Yep. And what is the problem after king c5? What move we had when we had the same pattern on the other side? Uh, well, before we were making this move, but our pawn's in the way. Yes, so basically, that's what a professional player would have figured out right then he goes back to the initial position understands the solution as g6 and so plays g6 first so that this queen has nowhere to go so the g6 just to get the square for the rook which he needs in the maneuver of rook a1 rook g1 and then having this rook g5 in the position <laughs> after checking on g4 and rook g5 I mean, I, I show you this example not to, because I wanted to like demoralize you. I show you this example just to, to, to basically like, like make you understand <laughs> how this like in our head works, how we solve in these things. Yeah, I'm like, huh? How do I just move a piece right now? <laughs> That's my thought, right? Oh God. 
So after G6, the thing is like that, okay, black cannot, I mean, obviously can, black can play something like queen g2, but there's no point I can take on h7. Right. You have and then one it's... more check. I answer it with a counter check. Yep. You can play king e4. Now I have millions of ways to win. The easiest is rook a4 check, and then I will queen. That means that you have no choice after g6 but to um, to take that pawn because, okay, you don't have enough checks or counterattacks for the queen. And now, obviously, the whole motif works. Here we have seen it. It is on that side of the king c5. There's a check immediately. And we had that pattern. And on the other side is connected with rook g1, check on g4. And now oh, this rook G5, which we didn't have if we had started with a pattern from the beginning, and that leads us to the solution G6. That's insane. That's insane, but I mean, that's I mean, like <laughs> this is this is one of the processes, like how our head is working. Of right. course, like you look at the board, we immediately see the pattern of rook A1, rook G1. I can tell you, it takes for most of us less than ten seconds. And then basically, like, since we already recognize the pattern, we know it's a study, we know there's only one solution, and we know basically, like, we have to make this pattern work in all the <laughs> circumstances. We understand eventually we need the square on g5, and that gets us to the point of g6. But okay, this is like for, uh, like, hobby players. Is this <laughs> like 2500 study puzzle? No, no. <laughs> this, is, this is 22, 23. This is, I mean, this is in my easy section, actually. Oh my god. <laughs> Just to give you an example, I can give you like, I mean, like I can show you something which is even in a harder section. I mean, just give me <laughs> one second. And this actually proves like a level of a super grandmaster of a grandmaster. But okay, my chat knows this example. I've showed it like five or six times, but it's so Must amazing. Must be a good one, yeah. It's a good one, but I mean, I think my mod will kill me for showing this, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll just do it. One second, I just have to build it. So, one second. You can enjoy and rest a little bit. I don't know how much it is for Whew. your brain in terms of calculation and exercises just got to get ready for the next one ready for yeah but okay the next one you will never solve i mean i will show <laughs> the next one i mean this next one is like not even i mean i'm not sure i would find it on the board mm -hmm. even me okay and okay i'm not like a super grandmaster i'm in the woman's world i'm very much high but in the men's world okay i'm not even in the top one self i guess but okay one second let me just um quickly think how the position is when I build it the queen must be here oh yes I got it I just I just want my, my puzzles guys I, I just want a two by six block and then I just <laughs> I need a cigarette I don't even smoke I agree <laughs> it's always push the pawn that's true that's always the right move Okay, my mod will kill me, but it doesn't matter because it's just the best example ever to explain what's going on in heads of really strong players. So, I mean, Hikaru, I mean, Hikaru would not solve this on the spot. He will solve it. Yeah. Okay. But so I mean, like, yes. Let's look at some basic things of what's happening. I have no checking potential. I have. I made a mistake. Sorry, in the setup. One second. Oh. <laughs> I like I confused the queens. The queens are opposite. Oh. Okay. One. Sorry, Fresh that's meat. my mistake. And it will like be set in a second again. I'll copy it, and I will give it in the PGM, and it will be here. Thanks for the subs, guys. Speak. Okay. So, Whew. all right, so I am up a pawn. I'm assuming I'm white, right? Yes, I mean, you are up, like, white is up a pawn. But, I mean, like, what do you think is objectively the best chance here for black to save the game? What move? 
if they're moving right now. Yeah, if okay, black is to move, but I mean, what move would you love to play, but likely not working? Uh, love to play, but likely not working. Yeah. Um. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know what move I'd love to play as black right now. I mean, here I can threaten a queen ever so slightly. Don't think about tactics here. Think okay. about, positionally speaking, what would be the best chance here for you not to lose. Like, not to lose, but to have a best chance. I mean, you have a pawn down, yeah. and you have a very weak spot on c6. Right. And there's a move which you would like to push in order to get rid of that guys here. What move would that be? Uh, man, I can't even push this pawn to try and, like, make a threat. Because all I have is a bishop protecting, and you've got that and that. So, take, take take i mean i can trade off a piece for two pawns but then i'm down more material yes so basically you understand that if c5 is working it would be a very good move because okay you can get rid of all these pawns right and you would exchange them and then you would be fine yeah but the problem is after c5 that okay there are at least two pieces which can take right obviously not the pawn because the pawn is pinned right so but there is a knight and the pawn taking uh, the, the queen, no, there's knight only taking, basically. Yeah, knight taking. So what happens after knight takes c5? You open the diagonal of the queen. Yep. So according to the calculation, you would calculate a move like queen d1 check. But after queen d1 check, I mean, you can stop your calculation after move like queen f1 because your attack is blown off. Right. That's one option. The other option is even king h2 could be good enough. Yeah. So basically, you understand, okay, in order to kill the option of queen f1, you can just capture here and get the queen lured to the square on c5. Right. Now, after the check, you see again, the king has to move now because queen f1 is not possible anymore as the queen left the diagonal. Yep. So that means, okay, we have king g2 and king h2. Let's imagine king g2 is happening in our calculation. Okay. Then after king g2, what motives do you spot? Uh, after king g2, you have a knight that can check and open some stuff up. Where else can the knight check? Because after knight is free check, you have to not forget you have also Oh, yeah, you have queen. Okay, so you could check here as well. Mm-hmm. And what so... What happens after that check? Pawn takes or... King moves. Those are the only two options. So h2 or pawn take. Mm -hmm. Okay, imagine the pawn takes. What would you do? Uh, bring my queen here and get some sort of indefinite draw. Yes, you get like a perpetual check. Yep. If king h2, how can you force the uh, pawn on g3 to capture anyway? What? attacking move can you play after king h2 getting the very same position like eventually force the same move how to force g takes f4 you have to make a mating threat where could that be right here so i guess go here or queen go. F1. I mean, after queen f1, I take on f4. I'm very happy because f2 is protected. But queen f3 is yeah. basically getting yeah. the same. Queen f3. So, so, I mean, we spot that motive. The problem is king can come to h2. And then, basically, like we see, we don't have any checks. Yep. And now, imagine you had some fantasy and you could take that pawn off the board. You would have a check on h5. Right. That's basically what happens in the brain of a very strong player right you so this, figure this all out this line doesn't work <laughs> this line doesn't work because he understood if that pawn wouldn't be on the h file then it would work as there's a check on h5 and if you go to g2 i have the check here if you go to g1 i go back so yep. basically that would work out into a draw right 
Now go to the initial position and solve the problem of the H file. How would you do that? So who's moving right now? We're saying white black is still, or black. No, still black is moving, but we just figured out the whole thing about C5, why it didn't work. So I guess this bishop now can put some threat there. Well, this bishop will not put any threat there because, okay, the problem is that we don't have a check on h5 because the pawn on h4 is on the h5. So how to distract that pawn? Yes. Always, always a pawn push, right? <laughs> yes. And this g5 move is like insane for like every human being just looking at the position, not understanding what is going on. I mean, that's, I mean, this example is not real. It is real. It happened in a game between two to grandmasters uh -huh. but it is not real from the perspective of a hobby player because that looks insane in a way to open up your own king right but the idea is that black understood his only chances to push c5 again then trades these pawns off and well the problem was that the motif didn't work as after king h2 there was no check on h5 right now if you take this happened in the game c5 was played and we get the very same position just with the difference now that after king h2 i have that check here if you go here i have the perpetual and if you try here i will enter with a knight and eventually i have the perpetual check right of course after g5 i mean white is not forced to take but if white not take on g5 i will take here you have to go back with g takes h4 you open up your king and you give a lot of more counter chances to white and here you have practically speaking very good chances to draw interesting and yes this position <laughs> was okay this position i understand this is like uh, a totally different level but this is just some kind of exercise you could give to players like nakamura right to make it interesting for him yeah so I will give you a last example because for me it's like 2.30 almost in the morning. Oh, geez, yeah. No, it's... <laughs> yes, but something like uh, about uh, pawn breakthroughs because I think this is also important stuff. Just one second. First, we start with the easiest basic ones, I guess. G5, guys, see, obviously. Right? Do you guys not see that at the start? Easy basics of um, pawn breakthroughs you must have seen in your life. I mean, just quickly check this is just a one minute thing you are white you know what to do here right oh i mean i've never studied any of these things but let's see if i push a5 then you take then i push you take then i'm screwed so that doesn't work if i push I mean, in the center Yes, very good about the center thing. The, the thing is like chess is very much comparable like uh, to any kind of these glad gladiator movies, yeah? Yeah. You attack the other position of the other kingdom and just imagine you like hit a, like, a, like a kind of shooting device on the rim yeah. instead of the center. Yeah. In the center, if you smash something, the like destruction <laughs> is huge. Yeah. But on the wing, like the destruction, it's like playing bowling. It's the same. If the yeah. ball comes in the middle, you hit the, the bullets. If the bowling is coming on the rim, it's like no disaster at all. Maybe one is falling. And chess is a very much like central game. It's also about central strategy. Right. It's why the first hit you should always consider in the center. Yeah, because if they go center, then they lose. Because if they take there, then I can... Well then, if I go here, if they take here, I mean, I guess I'm just pushing either way because I get a pass pawn either way because this middle guy is going to take, right? Okay, maybe you just play it because I understand <laughs> it's not easy. All right. So let's imagine I go here. I mean, right. White has two moments of ex uh, of exchanging that guy on b5. If yes. not, then you will take and you will pass right. with it. Yeah, so right. he has to take with either one i don't think it matters um, well it doesn't matter the pattern is the same just right. imagine you start with a c pawn so what is the problem now what we see is that guy is shining towards c8 right what is the problem on his route uh this dude is stopping him yes so this dude has to be distracted very yep. good a5. so then i'm pushing a5 and then 
he has to take or I mean yeah I mean he's stuck either way yeah and I got my queen yes and you get your queen okay this is just I mean this game is not about who is winning the game right. is like promoting first yeah so that is basically the easy way the same happens obviously if he takes with that guy you have to distract him once more right. same pattern very yeah. good so that is how like the basic pawn breakthroughs are working but obviously not so sophisticated ones let's get it to a more sophisticated position to make it a bit more exciting okay one second i love pawns um, guys oh this is this is like my dream right here so pawn get pushes this one which is actually explaining very well this fixation we have this h5 in the game one second and here we go what more could you want than pushing pawns so you're i mean have you ever heard about any rules in the pawn ending nope <laughs> not really um so let's see. The thought here is that you can't come away from my B pawn or it's going to promote. And so I get to make a break first if I wanted. Because if you don't, then I'm just able to push this guy. Um, I have right now opposition... So you're having to make a move. So I guess I'm just pushing this pawn right here. Okay, it's black to move, you know. Oh, it's black? Am I black or white? Uh, you're black, sorry. So oh. Sorry, oh. My, I didn't mention it. I saw like you see what I see. Gotcha. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so black to move. I am... Let's see. If I push here and you push, then I'm screwed. So I probably have to push my f6 pawn to prevent you from being able to play f5 without me capturing. And then... Okay, the rule basically says if you have a pawn ending, the one who has the distance past pawn is having the upper hand. Right. Which means so basically <laughs> like if black is passive, like just waiting around, you will go like, for example, here, here. And then instead of like taking care of that guy, we will just distract, um, well, black's king because right. black cannot really follow on a long run because that guy is getting through. Right. So he has to take care of that. And while you will capture mine, I will capture yours, and I will end up with that pawn. Right. So that's why I think f6 is the move that I want to make. You want to make f6. Why don't you want to make g6 in order to also create a pass pawn on that wing? I guess that would work too. I guess my thought is if I go g6, you go g5, and then I'm screwed. Very good, and that's basically oh, okay. what, what actually. No, that's why I'm showing. This is an easy example, of course. Got it. <laughs> showing this because actually, like, whenever I give this position to um, pupils, like not experienced ones, they would think like, okay, they learned there's a distance pawn. I also have to create the pass pawn to make a draw because then, I mean, the white king will hunt towards, let's say, f7 and the black king has to eliminate the pawn on b5. Right. So they would come up with the most naive approach playing g6. So they would calculate in their minds king c4, f5, you take, gotcha. on g5. And they would like understand, okay, he will get a five pawn and I will get b5 pawn. Right. What they forget, however, is that after g6, there is this tiny bad hit with g5. And with that one single pawn, I fix your pawn structure, and then the pawns cannot move, as there is the ampassang rule. Yep. And you worked it out really good, very good. I mean, you are very quick in adapting to what you learn, basically. So f6, g6, and f5, right. and the whole story is true. That was still rather easy. Let me get you something more sophisticated. And that is the last example for today. Let me just check if the board is still there or not. 
until now I didn't do much, so... <laughs> Uh, you are white, so you have to um, okay. switch the boards. Okay, so let's see. So, at this point, pawns... I'm probably making a waiting move here because any move that I'm pushing from these guys is bad. Well, that's just a kind of conclusion you do a little bit too quickly. Okay, sorry. So let's see. If I push here, you take, and then do that's bad for me. Why? I mean, like, if I play, if I know that after g5, my opponent takes on g5, I will oh, play it on the Actually, sport. hold on. No, that's really good. Because I push, and then you take, and then I have these guys. So that's the move. Exactly. The okay. distraction. I mean, yeah. basically, each pawn structure has a source. Okay. Or a root, let's yeah. say. This is the root. Yeah. So this root basically is keeping this pawn structure alive because, okay, there's this guy who is the one to be attacked. Yep. That's why, like, for example, like when you are on the king's side and they sometimes tell beginners, don't make moves like pawn moves on the king's side. Very simple to explain why. Once they move, for example, h6, they have a contact point on g5. If they move g6, they have a contact move on h5. So then the opponent can easier open the files and attack your king. It's right. Similar. Right. The root is a pawn on g7. So if, like, for example, I play g5, obviously taking would be very bad because you attack the root and you go through. Yep. But, here comes the but. What will black do after g5 in order to make your dreams disappear for good? Yes, wonderful, f6, and then basically you will never ever be able to, well, get a pass pawn and you will lose a game. Right. Because we have that one, we will go towards that wing, collect the pawns while you have to take care of my pass pawn. Right. So now we have to understand how can we yet create a pass pawn here? What is the problem? The problem of each pawn structure is usually connected to the root. Right. So let's see. So if, if he plays f6, then that shuts things down there. So first, because let's see, I'm here. So if I'm bringing up to f4, then... After f4, I will anyway play f6, and basically you will never ever hit the root again. And right. The root, the guy so I guess back. the first thing I'm doing is I'm pushing f6, f forcing a take right here, and mm -hmm. then I can make not that play yet. But then yes. I can make this play, and mm -hmm. then this play. So yes, I'm and you see that you will hit then the other roots, right. and the one which you want to hit is h6. Yep. But okay, now you have to calculate everything. Try to calculate, because okay, the king will obviously move towards the wing to hold that pass pawn you're creating. Right, so I go to f6, and they take. Mm-hmm. And so that's the first move. My second move goes to, do I need to go to f4? I can probably just push to g5. I don't even know if I need to go to f, oh no, because they can take this way, so I do. Yeah, so then I go to f4, and they can move their king to d5. Yes, very good. And then I push here. Yes. They take, I take, they take, and I'm free. Okay, they and probably they... don't take because so if they when don't... they take, they are not in the magic square. Have you heard right. about the magic square? Yeah. I don't exactly know how to calculate it, but I know a king has to be within it or he can't chase it down upon. So basically after h takes g5, your king is on d5, and the magic square, however, is that one. Right. Which means you can already like uh, uh, disinclude the pawn move h takes g5. So okay. instead, to be in that magic square, what have to have you? What do you need to play after g5 take take? 
for example, king e5, yes. Yeah. Then after king e5, what happens? Okay, so after king e5, oh god, where are all the pawns at? So you've got a black pawn here and here, and I've got this and this guy. I mean, but then I'm just taking right here because yes. you're blocking yourself out from getting there. So even though it's in the magic square, you can't actually get to me. Okay, basically, like you say, you play king e5, I take on h6, and I play king f6. What will you play? Well, you have a pawn on f6, right? Or did no, you trade pawn that? Is, no, the pawn is traded. Oh, okay. That pawn is traded. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, God. What's still on the board? <laughs> yeah, I, will, I will show you because I understand after two hours. It's fine. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to torture here so much. So, I mean... I mean, usually they say, like, in sh that's why the chess lesson usually should never be more than one hour because in the second hour you just <laughs> get to... Yeah, okay, so that takes, and that takes, this and now and this. this. That's the position. Right. And now what is white doing? So now white moves the king because... Yeah, that's basically the solution, and that's yeah. the Zugzwang. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, I don't know, Zugzwang is a German word, but this is how to explain it. Now, basically, no matter what you do, you lose the magic square. Right. And when you calculate it from the start, in order to find F6, well, you have to understand that when you attack pawn structures, always try to attack the root. Okay. And the root of the stability here is the pawn on G7, as there is a pawn on h6 which is the attacking base right. and the root basically is keeping that base alive and that's why a move like f6 here makes sense in order to destroy the pawn structure and the protection of everything right that makes yeah. sense so you want a very last one which is very much sophisticated sure yeah that one, okay, Anna eventually, eventually she solved it, but she took also a little bit, but she spotted it, of course. But I can tell you it's not so easy. One second, I have to find it. Ah, it's here, okay. So, and here we go. So, I have to remove these squares. <laughs> One second. They are still there from, I think, last time. Am I black or white in this position? You are white. Okay. Let me just check. The board is still... No, the board disappears sometimes. I don't even know why. But not... Okay, here we are. So, white to move. The first thing we spot is, like, white is a pawn down i think right. you met this calculation yes okay so first thing that we know is if we attack the structure here we have that same sort of idea from before where yes. if they take we push and then they take and then we're going and we yeah, have but... our pawns further than them yes but what is the problem what is different the problem is uh, if they're, I mean, they can try advancing this guy, but let's see. I mean, if I push and they advance, I take, and then I'm, I'm ahead there. I mean, like if the position would be so easy. <laughs> I know. So I mean, try to figure out why e6 doesn't work. Okay, so I go e6. Mm -hmm. They go takes it's very important to understand with what pawn you're taking yeah so if they take here mm -hmm. you have to play f6 in order to make yourself going through d8 what is the problem with f6 so i have to play f6 yeah well in order my like for example like i will show it for you if you play e6 right he takes with that pawn in order to get that one through, you have to attack the source, right? Right, so then I'm pushing so, my what? F6 pawn. What is the problem about that in this particular position? Hmm. 
They are checking me. Exactly, your king is exposed to the check. If, I mean, your opponent would take here, you would be very happy because here I have a protector. Right. So if you take, I can take back and the whole motive of queening works. That means e6, unfortunately, is just losing. Interesting. So that doesn't work. And actually, um, one of the best defenses in end games, apart from the fact that, Oof. okay, they can be drawn if all the material is gone, are two things. Right. One defense is stale matrix, because little material often allows also more stalemate patterns. And the other thing is like to get some material like which is not winning, like bishop and rook, uh, bishop and king against king. Yeah. But here, yeah. since they are only pawns, that one is excluded because the pawns will promote to a queen, and that would not be very helpful. So instead, if I go king f4, then I can make my e6 push. Yeah, but after king um, f4, the problem is still you cannot make your e6 push because after king f4 i might be just quicker with my guy promoting also with a check dang is so, that faster yeah i think so oh, after king f4 c six e6 let me know okay also have to calculate that i think it's the same but i mean i will win a lot of pawns which is fine you go you go I go, you go, but I will go with a check. But you and get I have the check, pawns. okay. And I have three pawns up. I think that is enough. Yeah. So that's why it doesn't work, just to show everybody. But okay, my chess got a little bit slower. Yep. So king f4 will not work. We have to find another thing here. And the only pattern actually, like which professionals will spot, um, immediately is that king how much squares does that king have one <laughs> one yes with what move you can make that square zero how can i make this move zero? Oh, if i move if i move it? this and they take absolutely so just go for it okay that's how basically we approach the solution but okay in order to understand that a stalemate it's quite simple in a way for us because we are pawned down you yeah. cannot yeah. make any pawn breakthroughs. We understood they don't work. So the only defense we have is stalemate or any kind of other drawish pattern which is not given but stalemate. And now makes the stalemate work for you. So now I'm pushing here. One second. I mean, like, whenever like, you... Oh, okay, sorry. Always consider the center because that is the strongest part. So if I push in the center... Yeah then they take i take with what pawn are you taking that's also very important i mean it's a mirror right now so it wouldn't matter right well it matters because i mean like i mean like if the d pawn takes on e6 it matters if you take with the f or the d5 pawn if the f pawn takes then obviously it's the other guy who's taking back just the question is what is the right guy for what Plex pawn, the right partner, let's say. Oh, okay, I gotcha. So if I push, you're saying, so if they take this way, yes. then I'm taking this way as well. That's what you think. But then you will get a wonderful square on d5 for your king. Oh, dang it, I don't want to have that. You're right. So if I go here, if they take this way, then I'm taking that way. this way. And now after taking that away, what is the only move for black? What happens after f6? After this take, if they push, then I'm pushing. Wait. Yes, very yeah. good. And yeah. you will go through. That's why, I mean, like, black has to take on e6. Yeah. And now, after taking on e6, how to make the stalemate in one move? Uh, I mean, I'm just taking back, right? Because then oh, I... but then you have f5 and d5 square. Not good to take this pawn on e6. Oh, man. 
I know it's a visualization. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where the pawns are anymore. I'm sorry. I'm trying. No, I know it's hard. I've so lost. Sorry. I've lost sense of what pawns are still on the board. <laughs> so I mean, let's imagine like the D pawn takes. Okay. The same, like if you take with that, yes, we take with that pawn because with this kind of pawn we ha we basically eliminate the option of F6 because of D6. Right. You take with the other pawn just for everybody to understand i can play if f6 and now you have that square on um d5 yeah and that position is lost because i'm a little bit faster yep so that's why basically um here in that position it is good to take with the right partner the opposition partner basically right so i take here and now i take here if i now take back my life is not good because i have like two honey bunnies which will like run through right so, so how, how do i get a draw in one move? um probably pushing my king because this is this is blocked this is blocked that no because if he takes then i still have another square that doesn't work so if i push this then he has to take and then it, i can't move so yeah, I'm Very pushing good. to d6. Yes, and that's basically I just have to bring the board back to the game. Don't know why my board always disappears. Uh, uh, um. That's a bit strange that my board doesn't like it. I don't know if your board disappears. My board disappears all the time. Um, mine. No, it's fine. Mine's yes. chilling. Mine's been fine. <laughs> Yes, and d6, and here we have the stalemate as the king now doesn't have pawns and squares. Yep. And this same stuff happens obviously on the other side. Yeah. Take, 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 and f6. Of course, this is like a difficult exercise, I have <laughs> to admit. But, I mean, it helps, of course, with certain rules. One rule is like one of the best defenses in endings with lower material is stalematrix. Right. That's one thing. And, well, if you understand that the initial position, if e6 doesn't work and you understand the problem is that check yep. connected to the pawn on d5, yep. you can only hope for draw because you understand you have a pawn down and then you have to look for stalemate tricks or any other tricks but here are unfortunately no other tricks and that works yeah yeah okay i think i will like now um <laughs> get you some rest because i think i really like pushed your brain <laughs> <laughs> you know that was fantastic thank you so much um i really appreciate that lesson that. It's a pity actually didn't play in the tournament because in my opinion, okay, I haven't seen the other guys obviously like uh, like okay, I saw sometimes some sequences of the lessons with Alexandra, but uh, I was not so much impressed in a way. But actually, like you're you're higher rated. Ah, oh, thank you. The next time you can claim like okay, but I should be in the tournament because I think <laughs> boy boy, I think he's as strong as Ron, right? Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. I, I don't know if I could compete with him, but. Uh, thank you. No, I, I appreciate that compliment. And that was that was really good coaching as well. I mean, all of those exercises, um, they just had a lot of a lot of stuff to them that, you know, make me go, oh, this is something that I should think about in this way, you know, and uh, and a lot of stuff as well. Just even like the pawn breakthroughs, you know, now I just know like E6, assuming there's no king to be checked or whatever is you know a breakdown of that because that's one of those just like easy patterns i'm sure that every pro has memorized right yes i mean we have our brain is full of right i mean thousands of these but you know uh, any of these and so adding those things in is just you know even more helpful i mean from what i saw actually like your biggest weakness in my opinion is that you spot things even like intuitively, but you exclude them immediately without <laughs> having a second look at it. Yeah. And actually, if you would stop that already, even at the board, because actually like there is like a phrase like um, spoken by a very um, famous chess coach, Arthur Yusupov, mm -hmm. and he stated like the first move which gets to your mind is usually the best one because that move was done by intuition mainly. 
and then those moves you have to observe more deeply yeah and you would sometimes dismiss these moves because okay you think like okay this guy is unprotected and then it would vanish but actually you should trust your intuition stronger because chess is also a very intuitive game even though it needs calculation <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth, again. Go get some rest. I know it's very late over there, so I appreciate you staying up to help teach us. My uh, my chat has said this is very informative as well and really appreciated it. So um, go give her a follow, guys! Exclamation mark, Liz. I mean, those who are actually interested in all these kind of exercises on my YouTube channel, actually, like I have a whole like format about different kind of exercises in Perfect. all kind of different um, ways. Perfect. Yeah. So go check her out, everybody, if you want to learn anything else about chess. Great teacher. All right, Alex, I wish you a wonderful evening because Thank I you. think it's still early in your country. Yeah, 7.30, 7.45. And my candy is almost three, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> perfect perfect timing yeah all right then bye bye everybody bye nice evening and thank you have a maybe good night. next time hand and brain just finding someone yeah we just got to find that other person and we'll do we'll yeah. do some hand and brain all right bye, Liz. bye, bye. have a good one good night